Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. My name is Arno. We're going to talk about one component today, which is called the rover. Rover is part of the Cloud Adoption Framework uh, Landing Zone, which is the Site Reliability Engineering Toolkit for Terraform on Azure. And as you see, it's just one part of the many components that uh, we are leveraging as part of the framework. So Rover is at the very center of uh, everything we do and has many forms and many aspects. Let's review some of them together today. So first, do we use Rover or do we use Terraform bare metal? Which one is better? It's usually this kind of question because we're happily starting doing Terraform.exe on our machine, on our laptop, and, and it's cool. But soon we realize that we need to achieve a couple of stuff. First thing, which is to store the state security somewhere. Uh, on Azure, for instance, if you're going to collaborate with uh, some other people in your team. And you realize as well that when you're doing DevOps, you don't need just uh, Terraform.exe, but you need a couple of tools. You need AZ uh, CLI, you need maybe Ansible, maybe Chef, maybe Puppet, maybe other tools that you need to make sure are present when you are running your environment. So this is what Rover achieves for you, actually putting into a release version the set of components that you need to run your environment. Now that means a couple of stuff, that means that in the pipelines you will always have those tools with you and the pipeline you'd be able to jump from one pipeline technology to the other because what you just have to do is called Rover, whichever pipeline technology you're choosing. And another aspect is that when you are developing on your machine you'll be using Rover as well and it means that Everybody in the team will have the same tools, will be relying on the same version. So that would be really helping for your development cycle, accelerating your development cycle and everybody running with the same tools. So you can use Rover, of course, to leverage Kafka or Form Landing Zone, but you can use that to run and manage the state for you for any piece of code you're writing in Terraform. So when we're looking at Rover, Rover has actually two dimensions. One of it, it's a container. So you can use this container and run it everywhere on your PC, your Mac, Linux, or on Visual Studio uh, code and code spaces from GitHub. So meaning you have the same development environment everywhere, totally ubiquitous with absolutely all the tools you need. And by tools, we mean those components as mentioned, but also the right Git hooks and the right DevOps tools to have good code quality in your environment. Having this uh, container dimension allows you uh, to run it everywhere, but also to switch very fast from one running uh, version, from one running environment to another. So jumping and testing a new version of Terraform with the whole environment, you're just easy as changing one line, which is the reference to the container that you are using. Now, Rover is also a Terraform wrapper. That's another dimension. So you can use Rover and that would allow you to manage the Terraform state files for uh, your environment. So really, we are really believing that uh, state management, state as a commodity should be everywhere. So uh, you are able to use Rover to manipulate the state file super easily. And that means that, yeah, you have it the same stack trace when you're running uh, Rover on your laptop or Rover in the CI CD and totally seamless experience for you. Either you're running locally or you're running things inside pipelines. So an example of Rover command here, you see we're just calling Rover and we are just basically diving it the path to the landing zone. So we just say Rover dash LZ, the path to the landing zone we want to use, launchpad solution, any add-on solution or any other Terraform code you're writing. The path to the var folder, so Terraform uh, only take var files, we feed it with uh, var folders, so you can basically automatically feed all the variable files in one command inside one folder, so that's really uh, much easier. The TF state subscription is where you want to use the state management uh, subscription, so where are the state files located to manage your different um, Terraform state files from the CAF landing zones. The target subscription, so where are you wanting to deploy those resources that are specified basically in the landing zone and variable folder that you specified previously. Then you specify which TF state file you want to use for that. So here that would be the name 
that would be used for you on the Terraform uh, state file and on the storage account inside the storage container on Azure storage account. Then you can specify the severity levels. You have the dash launchpad when you are running that for launchpad. We're going to see that into the other modules. And then you specify which environment you're using. So whether you're using Contoso or another environment, if you have multiple CAF environment inside the subscription, that allows you to target the right TF state where um, to store your uh, environment. And then you specify which level there is a set of levels in the CAF framework. So here you just pick which state, which environment, which level, and automatically uh, Rover will do the job for you of locating the state, connecting to the state, uh, if it already exists, and dating it, or just creating it there where you specify it to be. Of course, you can specify and split the command. So you specify dash P here to specify where to store the plan file that you want to do for your operation. And here you can see that you can do the dash A, which stands for action. And then you specify uh, here that you want to do a plan. And you can specify an apply on a pre-existing plan. So you just run the command with plan first and then with apply. Or you can just directly cut the two last line and just run dash A apply. But of course, um, do that under a professional surveillance because it's really about to apply things directly without even asking you a confirmation to apply the plan that will be calculated. So that's just an example of a command line and you see there's a couple of variations. You can find all in the documentation. Now, if we look at the components that are inside the rover, so we are embedding a couple of tools and of course there is the rover.sh wrapper that we are using for state management and uh, locator services. There's also a set of tools that are here already for you and those are basically here because we are using it into the DevOps operations that we are uh, doing. And of course, it's open to suggestions. So as we'll see, uh, Rover is an open source tool and is open uh, to PR uh, issues and suggestion. But currently, the tools that we have on it are those ones. So there's PowerShell, Microsoft SQL tools, of course, the AZ CLI, JQ and YQ to do your uh, query uh, on JSON and YAML files. Uh, Golang, uh, Kubectl, Helm, GitHub Shell, Terraform, of course, Terraform Docs, uh, Packer, and Ansible. All those tools and also some code excellence uh, tools like, for instance, TFLint, TFLint with the Azure rule set, Kflint, uh, and importantly, pre-commit. So we have also a set of pre-commit uh, and pre-commit hooks that are here to make sure that some basic health check is done before you are able to commit your code to a repository, which is always a good practice. And as well, as part of the DevSecOps tool chain, uh, Rover comes with Chekhov TFSec uh, to make sure that you are able to inspect your plan files and make sure that it complies with what you want to do and define in terms of compliance. Now we can see that Rover is actually released on the Docker Hub. So you see the latest versions are here and you are able to uh, leverage them directly. So what it means is that you can just use it and leverage it off Docker uh, Hub without the need to recompile the tools that uh, you need inside it. If you want to do so, it's here and you see we have a uh, rover, there are issues open, there are pull requests where the community contributes and add tools, fix bugs and add features. That's totally okay. And as we mentioned, Rover is a container. So if I am just going to um, my uh, environment here, I can just do um, docker run dash it. And if I get the right version of Rover, I can just run this command, uh, paste. And since I already have it locally, I can just run it. And I am inside the container now, so you can see I can run Terraform version. 
I can make sure that I have the right version. Yeah, there is 117 available, but actually right now I'm going to use 116 because that's the validated version for my environment, so it's totally fine. But also we have the validated version of AZ uh, CLI. We have additional tool, as we mentioned, there's Ansible, which is already present in the container, and there's all sets of additional tools that you can leverage um, anytime. Now, if we go to a development environment for Kafka Form Landing Zone, what we're using is Visual Studio Code very often. So if you see here, inside my uh, directory for VS Code, you can see that I have a special folder, which is .dev container, and inside it, there is the docker-compose.yaml. And once I have this type of file, actually Visual Studio Code allows me to open this inside a container. So it means that I'm going to open the container, the rover container is going to run on my laptop and I'm going to project that inside my running environment. So I will be inside the container and I will be running my dev environment. So if I click here on this one and I just pick reopen in container, it means that automatically it will propagate me and it will put me inside the container. Now I've done that already for you and you see right now it tells me, hey, you're inside a dev container, uh, Azure CAF module, because that's my uh, development environment uh, here in this box. So when we have that, we are able to start exploring uh, a little more. So if you want to use the command, as you mentioned, you can just do uh, Terraform, you can just run any Terraform command, as you know. If you are a bit lazy, you can just type T because we aliased it here. And I can use that to run uh, Terraform without using Rover as a wrapper. So here, remember, there are two dimensions into uh, Rover. There is the wrapper and there is the container. So here I am inside the container, but I can just do Terraform in it. So you see I am inside the example uh, section here of my code and I'm just doing a Terraform in it which is going to check the version of the module I'm requiring and initializing my code. So here, this is really the first dimension of it where I'm just using Terraform and I can do Terraform in it, plan, apply and destroy without any issue. Another um, dimension, as we mentioned before, is that I can use that with the rover as a wrapper this time. So now let's have a view around this. But I'm going to use that. I can just do a rover and here you see the ZSH allows me to find back my uh, environment, but I can do here a rover dash landing zone. I'm gonna pick that, I'm picking this example called var folder per view, per view account on level one. I'm going to run that against my Sentoso environment, Contoso Sunpit, and then uh, this TF state file uh, with some random stuff generated at the end. Maybe I can add some more characters. And here you see I can just do a plan. So here what's going to happen is that it's going to ask me for the right version of Rover. And here I don't have the right version of Rover. So here it tells me that it's verifying that it doesn't match. So one of the thing I can do is I can just here verify that I rebuild the container because I was previously in a preview version and I'm right now into a fully released version. So when you see when I'm doing that, I'm rebuilding my container. I'm opening my command and here this guy I can run again my command and it will uh, tell me, hey, uh, you are able to run this uh, uh, example. So this example is not working, that's no problem. I'm just gonna pick another one. Compute here, you see that you can pick compute virtual uh, machine and then I can pick uh, 101 single VM windows. And here I can pick the Terraform state file that I want. So here, demo, compute 101 VM and I can just do a plan and you can see that this one actually gives me an output of 
what I'm going to do. So you see that I'm using this uh, connection to this subscription and then uh, you have an output that I'm running a landing zone command and I am going to read those variable files into this path. I'm going to deploy into level one from the Contoso Sandpit environment and I'm using the directory TF state inside my environment and the name of the state will be this one. So here you can see that we are loading the different parts of the module, checking the right version of the Terraform provider. So here is Azure RM298. And while the plan runs, it will give me an output of um, what is going to be deployed inside my environment. So here you see, we're going to add 23 uh, components. So usually you want to review what's going to happen, what you're going to apply inside your environment. And you just do uh, apply command. And if you do that, it will not reuse the uh, plan that you just calculated. So it would be a little bit too bad. So here you see I was uh, doing some shortcut and I didn't specify any plan file, but here I can just get it from the previous command. And you see in the rover output here, it will tell me that I've run that and I've specified the plan file somewhere. So here you see the plan file is here. So I can just do control C and Control V. So when I do that, I'm just going to apply the plan file I just calculated. So of course it will be uh, immediate application of the plan file on the subscription um, currently. So that's one important dimension around uh, Rover. And you see that I'm running here inside my development uh, container inside uh, VS Code. I have everything integrated, which is of course Great, but there's also something that we mentioned previously is that I can run that into code space. So here, for example, you can see that I am inside my code space uh, environment and inside this code space environment, I can just go here, do code, new code space. And what it's going to do for me is going to spin up the environment. So just as VS Code, it's reading the dev container file. It's seeing that there's the container that we are going to use and is going to mount the container with my repo and make my dev environment exactly the same as it is on my laptop. So you see that after a couple of minutes, I have my uh, same running environment here. I have my same uh, rover command. I need to do my rover login. And once the rover login it, uh, is achieved, then I will be inside my subscription, inside my environment, and I will have access just as much as I have on my local machine directly from code space. So the same rover commands I run previously inside my local machine, actually I can rerun the same command and guess what? Based on my identity, I would be able to connect to the same state, run the same command, and I will get the same um, output, which probably is no changes has happened inside the environment. So here, that's the complete dev environment as we've seen it before with the same Terraform version, with the same exact suite of components. Since I'm using the same version of the rover. Now, there's two dimensions as well of the rover. If we go to the pipeline here, you see that I'm using rover in this first pipeline, just rover as a container. So I'm just doing here a Terraform init and a Terraform plan of my configuration, just as you know it. So that's using just the container dimension of rover. But you can see that here, when I'm using uh, this different pipeline here, I'm using now Rover as a landing zone mode. So I'm using Rover to deploy the launchpad. And here it's Rover dash LZ var folder level, etc. And you see that we have the stack trace here of what has happened. And you can see that this is the same Rover command. So ultimately, it will be the same experience locally or in the pipelines. And that really usually helps a lot when you are troubleshooting things in Terraform and really sleep streaming and making seamless the transition from the pipelines to the uh, environment is really, really uh, helpful. So that's about it for the intro to Rover. You can find more about it on the documentation, aka.ms slash calf slash Terraform. 
Don't forget to look at the other video to have the view of all the other components and have fun coding with Kafter or Form landing zones on Azure.